When you have a really small split ergo keyboard, such as this Ferris Sweep right here, it's really important to have a key map that works for you, makes sense, and is easy to learn. I've made a few key maps throughout my time with this board, and a few days ago I sat down and combined everything I learned to make uh, what I think is a pretty good key map that a lot of people would like. The reason why I say a lot of people will like this is because I specifically designed it to be easy to adopt if you already are used to a classic QWERTY keyboard. So with the intro out of the way, let's get right into it. I'm using Nice Nanos for this Ferris Sweep, so my key map is coded in ZMK, but you can transfer over this key map into uh, QMK if you have a non-wireless build. So one of the first modifications that I made to this key map is that I made a specific Mac and Windows layer. The reason for this is that I have a Mac and a Windows computer, so switching between the two is often jarring because the control command and alt keys are in different places on the Mac and the Windows keyboards. So in these first two K maps, the only difference is that I have uh, different home row mods. So as you see uh, in the Mac layer, it's calling this HRML, uh, right, which is right here. And this is the left modifier key, so it has the uh, command key, the control key, and then the alt key. Whereas this one right here, which is called in the Windows layer, which is the left side uh, home row mods, instead says control, then the Windows key, and then alt. So this small change allows uh, switching between Mac and Windows a lot easier. So besides having two default layers, for Windows and Mac, the key map is pretty simple. There's just three layers. There's the default one, which is either Windows or Mac, and then there's the right layer, which will be activated by pressing and holding this key right here. And then there's a left layer, which is triggered by pressing and holding this key right here. And then there's a try layer, which is triggered by pressing the two keys at the same time. So you press that, then you go to the try layer. For all the alpha keys, they're put in the same places as they would in a typical QWERTY keyboard. Comma and period are also in the same place. To the right of that, we have enter, which is just this key right here. So uh, if I press here, enter, I can press enter. And then if I want to press backspace, uh, it's just this key right here. So if I type some stuff and then I want to press backspace, I can just press backspace there. I really like this positioning of the backspace key because it's on the home row and since you press backspace a lot, uh, it's pretty convenient to have it in such a close location. And also on traditional QWERTY keyboards, we're used to typing backspace with our pinky. So having that right here on uh, the same finger makes the transition pretty easy. Next, for the home row mods, if you press and hold down with the pointer finger, you trigger the command key, or if you're on the Windows keyboard, uh, that's the control key. Uh, and if you do the middle finger and hold that down, that triggers the control key on Mac keyboards and the Windows key on Windows keyboards. And if you press and hold the ring finger on the home row, that triggers the alt key for both Windows and Mac. Now for the four thumb keys, they're the same for Windows and Mac layers. Again, as I said before, if you press and hold this key, that goes to the left layer. And if you press and hold this key, it goes to the right layer. But also, if you just tap it, it presses the tab key. And I have it set for both of the thumb keys, but uh, if you have another key that you press as often, uh, such as exit or uh, delete, you can put that there for the tab functionality, but for now I just set them both as tab so that uh, you can experiment around with which key you want on the thumb key. So it's kind of just a pla placeholder uh, for now. For the outer thumb key on the left hand, this one right here, that presses the left shift key. I really love having the shift key on the thumb because unlike normal keyboards, for optimal ergonomic typing, uh, you can just hold down this and then type whatever you want. So 
uh, on traditional keyboards, if you would want the really optimal way of typing, you would have to switch between the fingers for each of the capital letters you want to press. So for example, if you want to press capital I, uh, since I is on the right hand, you would have to uh, press the left shift key so that you won't have to contort your hand. And then say if you wanted to uh, say capital A, right? you would have to do it on the right hand, right? You'd have to press shift on the right hand and then press A with the left hand. Uh, so that again, you won't have to contort your hand in any way. So, but since we have the shift on the thumb, it makes this a lot simpler and makes uh, typing capital letters uh, a lot more ergonomic in my opinion. Next for space, that's just this thumb key right here. Uh, you can switch around shift and uh, space depending on which key that you typically press space on. That should be it for the default layers. So now let's move on to the right layer. Okay, so for my uh, right layer, I have at the very top just all the numbers uh, 1 through 9 and then 0, just like a normal QWERTY keyboard. You can rearrange these numbers if uh, you want a possibly more efficient way of uh, typing numbers because I know that some numbers are pressed more than others But just for the transition from a QWERTY keyboard to a split ergo one I love having it just like this on the next row. I have delete caps lock uh, print screen and insert on the right hand and then on the right hand I just have uh, left down up right if you're a Vim user, you'll probably recognize this left down up right uh, order, but as you see, I did shift it over one key because uh, I just wanted it on home row because that felt a lot more natural to me than um, shifting my hand over here. If you're extremely used to Vim though, you may just wanna shift it over. Then as you can see uh, right below that, I followed the same order of uh, going to the left going down, going up, and then going right. But instead I said home, uh, page down, page up, and end. Finally, the last thing about the right layer is that the exit key is right here. So uh, how you get to that is you just press uh, this key right here and then right here, and then you press exit. Having these on the thumbs makes the exit key really easy to reach. This is actually something I pulled from the stock ZM key, key map for the Ferris suite. Now let's move on to the left layer. So again, trying to stay true to a typical QWERTY keyboard, I laid all these symbol characters that are typically laid on the uh, shifted number keys. I laid that on the same positions as the right layer's number key. I did that for everything except for the, right, the left and right parentheses. The reason for that is that I wanted to relocate that to a more sensible relocation. Instead, I decided to put uh, the grave and the tilde right there, because that's usually right to the left of the uh, one key. For the rest of the left layer, I really thought about positional grouping of similar keys, so it would be as simple to learn as possible. So as you can see, this key and this key uh, on the left layer are just the the double quote and the single quote. So for the next group, I have all of the brackets. So on this top one, I have all of the left one, the left brackets, the uh, square bracket, the curly bracket, and uh, the left parentheses. And then I have below it, just the right variants of each. On the right hand of the left layer, I have the next group, which is just the forward and backslashes, which uh, similar to the quotes are just stacked on top of each other. This next group you may recognize as the minus and equal sign on a typical QWERTY keyboard because uh, the shifted variance of it is just underscore and plus, which I put under it. This way, when you're learning the key map, you can just uh, glance at a typical QWERTY keyboard and see the order of all four of these keys in this group. Next, I have a uh, colon and semicolon on uh, this middle layer on the pinky and ring finger. This is a nice positioning because again, it's in the same location as you would usually have it on a typical QWERTY keyboard and you would press it with your pinky on this exact key. So uh, I just put that in a separate layer because 
I feel like we press delete more than we press semicolon. And then I put colon right to the side of that because colon is just the shifted version of semicolon. Right below that, we have question mark. And again, it's in the same position as it would be in a typical QWERTY keyboard, except for it's just on the left layer. And then we have pipe right to the left of it. So what I try to maintain in these right and left layers is that the right layer is really mostly a navigational layer, whereas the left layer is more of just a symbol layer. This makes it super easy when learning it because you can kind of just intuitively think which keys will be on the left layer if they're a symbol key and the right layer are just all of the navigational keys. This way you'll be mostly holding down the uh, left key when you're typing something and the right key when you're trying to just navigate around. Okay, now finally, let's move on to the tri layer. Okay, now on the tri layer, we have F1 through F12 in a four by three grid. For the rest of the left side, we have uh, Bluetooth profiles. So in my previous key maps, I used to have uh, Bluetooth next and previous rather than just having one through five. And I found this a lot harder because especially with no display or any readout of what profile you're on, it gets kind of confusing to find out which profile you're on. Instead, if you have all of the profiles laid out zero through five, uh, it gets super easy to switch and it's not a guessing game to find out uh, which profile you're in. So I have uh, zero, one, and then clear here, which just clears a profile so uh, you can connect another device to it and then two, three, four. I also have toggle out, which just toggles between a Bluetooth connection and a wired connection. Next, below this toggle out, I have increasing and decreasing the display brightness. And then on this column, I have uh, two empty spaces and then this that just toggles between the Windows and the Mac default layer. I left the blanks below this in case uh, you want to add other layers for different modes, such as uh, one-handed mode uh, or certain gaming layers or things like that. I find having a dedicated key to switch between layers is a lot nicer than having a certain key combo for it because you can hot swap between layers extremely fast using it. On the column beside that, I have a volume mute up and down. And then on the one to the right of that, I have next song, pause music, and previous song. So that's the entire key map. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope this helped. I hope this key map was as useful as it was to me, to you. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any ways that you can think of to optimize this key map even further. I'd love to hear that or any other comments you have. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I have some other keyboard content, uh, such as a ZMK tutorial and a review about the Ferris Sweep. And yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya!